Darcy against Barry Lane, Des Smith against Nick Falder, and Eamon Darcy against Mark James. And in the other semi-final, Sevi Ballesteros for Spain against Greg Norman, Jose Rivero against Roger Davis, and Jose Maria Alazabal against David Graham. Head-to-head -head play, but of course stroke play decides each game. In other words, a man recording 71 will win by one stroke from the man who has the 72. It's quite simple. So then, let's go back to the start and on the tee at the uh, beginning of the first semi-final, Sevi Ballesteros and Greg Norman. So a delayed start, but uh, Ballesteros opening up in this, uh, well, promises to be a, a tremendous match. Spain versus Australia. Sevi's not been playing all, all that well, just enough to keep winning, but hasn't broken 70 yet. And it was nicely played down the fairway. I don't think they'll be able to see more than the amount of a couple of hundred tee, yards, 220 yards, so Greg the tee shot's just going out of eye, eye range. Now, Greg Norman, who I noticed um, yesterday is swinging, appeared to be swinging the club about six inches shorter than normal in the backswing. And here you get a super view. He used to go just beyond the horizontal. Oh, it's only three-quarter swing. Now, I don't know whether that is the result of his damaged uh, wrist or a new method of play. I know not, but he's definitely six inches short in the backswing than he was 12 months ago. Both of them were well, almost impossible to miss this opening fairway and over the burn to the flag sort of front middle. Look at Greg Norman's swing and you'll see how far he's there. You see it doesn't get anywhere near the, the horizontal. It must be six inches short of it. Well, even our camera is having uh, great difficulty in cutting through the mist and the frustrating thing is that uh, a handful or so of miles away things are very clear. Seve second, first hole. That was a lovely balanced swing, looked like a little push with an eight or a nine iron. Oh, applause, applause, yes. Nice shot. Now Greg Norman's second shot. said that he was hitting the ball much a much shallower plane he hardly brushed the turf there there's certainly no real divot taken but uh, you see him the right distance but about 12 yards wide so Greg Norman long putt for a birdie three at the opening hole and that's a pretty good putt nice opening putt from long range it'll be a four for Greg Norman saying Ballesteros has not been playing up to his um, brilliant form of late he's been quite ordinary you might say over the last couple of days and uh, yet to break 70 but doing enough to win his matches and now I think we might see a different Ballesteros today he has the ability to change gear No, and the greens, perhaps with the, the mist a little slower. They were the greenkeepers were out cutting them this morning, almost at dawn. Of course, these are huge greens to cut. It's a massive job, but of course it's very damp and quite. Uh, it's not cold, but there's a chill in the air, and the greens will certainly not be not be fast.
Ballesteros on the second tee. And the line directly over those gorse bushes on the right. Bunker's waiting up the left-hand side, and uh, I think he has just avoided one. All the bunkers, of course, have names at St. Andrews, and this hole has the famous Cheeps bunker up the left-hand side. <laughs> Savvy was there on the tee, waiting this morning for the fog to clear as Greg Norman drives. A noticeably shorter swing, as Peter was saying. Uh, no doubt caused by the damaged left wrist. And that one safely up the centre of the fairway. The second hole is 411 yards. Very difficult green to hit with a huge ridge in the centre of it. And you can see some of the puddles from the earlier rainfall of the week. The first tee in the second match, Jose Rivero for Spain. And although it's a bit murky, I think the light is definitely beginning to improve. And even if it is a little dull, this opening tee shot is uh, a nice wide one. No fears, you know pretty well where to hit it. And if, even if you're slightly inaccurate, it's an immense target. Now his opponent, Roger Davis. have to worry about seeing where that one went knew it was good and both those drives in good shape for the second Savvy to play first at the second and a shot of about 160 to 65 yards and I would think this is a six iron and he's looking anxiously as though it's slipped off to the right a bit the way he was leaning indeed it is to the right but it's not disgracefully far to the right at all that's a good shot Greg Norman had the longest tee shot he took the narrow route up the right hand side of the fairway and really quite bold some of the national press have come out to see this event This is only a seven or eight iron for Greg Norman. And that's a good shot from Norman. Just a little ridge between his ball and the hole. The greens here massive, but of course the second green shared with the 16th. So many greens are at St. Andrews. Well, we can show you now how these teams reach the semi-finals. Spain in the first round beat Zimbabwe 3-0 and then in yesterday's quarter-final they beat Japan 3-0 so nobody's taken a match off Spain yet. Australia in their first round beat Brazil 3-0 and then yesterday in the quarter-finals they beat Wales 2-1. Ian Woosnam provided the solitary Welsh win and he beat the captain of Australia Greg Norman. And this is how the other two semi-finalists got there. Ireland in the first round beat Canada 2-1 and uh, in the quarter-final, well a tremendous win yesterday over the number one seeds, the United States of America, two and a half to a half and uh, Eamon Darcy coming in with a 66 to beat Curtis Strange, the American captain by two strokes. And then England in the first round put France away 3-0 and then yesterday had that tremendous battle against Scotland in which everything was uh, level as Faldo and Lyle came off the uh, the 18th tee and Faldo managed to sink a putt on the 18th to steal the match from Scotland. Tremendous stuff. Ahead at the second green, Ballesteros first to putt.
<clears throat> Ballesteros with caddy Ian Wright. He's, uh, I think, got Ian as a sort of permanent companion now. He's years of having his brother caddying for him have gone, and I think this has proved to great advantage. He's won some five tournaments in recent months with a new caddy, and I think they get on very well together. Alasteros on the second green, this putt for a three. He was all ready to go, but then he's just had a, a doubt in his mind. There's quite a swing. You can see that huge rising ground at the front of the green, which causes the ball to come from left to right as he putts. You see the swing there from left to right. And again, uh, as at the opening hole, coming up short, the green's obviously very damp with this mist. And the players having hung about all morning, they really haven't got the touch going. The first green, and uh, extraordinary uh, Shots, Rivera, of course, is driven into the water. Sorry, he was second in the water. And uh, so he's had a drop under penalty, so now playing four. Now, Roger Davis also mishit his second shot, but was fortunate enough to end up actually short of the water. Two very poor shots from golfers of this caliber, and one can only imagine uh, showing the strain of playing this form of representative golf. So that's four for Rivera. At the second, Greg Norman, a chance to take the lead. Well, I thought it was going to swing quite quickly from the right, but it seemed to change direction. So Australia's captain makes a par four with this one. And Savy still has quite a lot left for, for his four. Nice to see Greg back in golf. The injured wrist uh, recovered, not fully recovered, and we can see that in his swing. But nice to see him back in action anyway and back in this country. Most welcome guest. Now it went in the side door, but it's in, and it's another four for Ballesteros. So both the captains have parred the opening two holes. Roger Davis first to putt on the first green. This for a four, then. And he recovers well. And the great ability of these golfers to put really bad shots, even horrific ones, behind them. And a good chip and putt over the, over the burn. So four for him. Now, Rivera, who, well, his second shot was no worse than Davis. In fact, I suppose you could say marginally better because he got closer to the green. But, of course, with the penalty of going in the burn, he has this not to drop two shots behind. He's got this for a five. And, well, if there's such thing as a good five on this opening hole, that was it. Both players getting down there from short of the burn in two, and it's not an easy pitch. The third tee, and the captain's leading the way. Seve first, 352 yards, and uh, quite a number of little bunkers just off the fairway on the right-hand side, and the cluster of four bunkers on the left of the fairway. It seemed to give that a little bit more shaft. And suddenly the visibility improves quite dramatically. And I think we're definitely going to get this round finished today. Now we're talking about Greg Norman's swing. I, I noticed that uh, he was at least six inches shorter in the backswing than last year. Now whether that's 
due to the wrist injury. I, I don't know, but uh, it's very noticeable. There, he's, he's nowhere near the horizontal. Mm. He's still a very impressive striker. That's right in the middle of the fairway. Jose Rivero drives at the second. <coughs> After a very disappointing opening hole, he's uh, hit that one quite smartly. And they're uh, both drives in the center of the fairway. Fairway, Ballesteros and Wrigley looking at their uh, yardage charts, trying to just uh, get his uh, Ian Wright. Why is it Wrigley? Ian Wright. Now, the danger here, there's a big bunker right in the middle of this green, the third, which is shared with the 15th. Cart Gate, it's called. A big, big bunker. <coughs> big bunker right in front of two other bunkers off on the right. It's only 352 yards. The green's got bit of a tilt on it 50 yards in length and once again it's a club selection and if you're not coming in from the proper side of the fairway getting close to the pin is it's not an easy task Sevy with that dead start no waggle and the club taken away very steeply in the backswing and pitched and spun back a little bit he's played two matches so far he's been 72 on both occasions which is par but uh, but he's been playing such spectacular golf over the last few few months. It almost looks it looks very ordinary. Uh, Greg Norman, he's had a 71 and a 73, so he and Seve have both scored at the same 144 for the two rounds. Well, he certainly took plenty of divot that time up over the bank and that's a beautiful shot from Greg Norman. So you see the big slope that comes down the bunker cart gate cut into that big slope. Nice shot from Greg Norman. At the second hole, Jose Rivero about to play his second shot. Normally a very good iron player, and yesterday he played superb golf. Roger Davis's ball uh, already on the green, and we cannot see the Spaniard's ball. That's that's understandable. The visibility is still quite poor. Well, he's gone through the back and he's into a hollow, Vero, and he's left himself a very difficult little uh, recovery shot from there. Well, Lazabal, his second shot at the first. This is the third match, Lazabal versus David Graham. And this third shot, certainly no more than 100. Oh, and that must travel very close to the pin. Beautiful shot. Uh, David Graham has driven down the right, and you can see very close to the burn, which creeps into the fairway at that point. But OK. Oh, what a good shot. Two excellent strokes from this last match. Third green, Ballesteros first coming down and left to right. doesn't take long once he's over the ball a very simple stance the feet just turned out slightly very comfortable ordinary looking stance and a nice strike and oh Ooh -hoo -hoo. my word so that's a four for Sevi. 
finish, okay? Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> David Graham at the first, birdie putt. Very, very well done. Back door, but bearing in mind he'd seen his opponent. Virtually secure a birdie with his second shot. That's a very good one from a very good reply by him. So he opens with a three. At the second, Rivero, uh, a rather shaky start from the Spaniard. He's got his work cut out <laughs> to come up and over this bank here. And that really was a superb approach putt. Greg Norman at the third. This to uh, go into the lead. This for birdie three. Changed his putter from yesterday. He had an ordinary centre shafted sort of bullseye type putter. And he's got it. Oh, skim the edge. Elazabel hold his putt at the first, so that hole was halved in three. David Graham and Lazabel, Lazabel and the two Capitanos here halve this hole in four. Match level. This hole is Greg Norman, just the one stroke ahead of Ballesteros. Roger Davis, three ahead of Jose Rivera, and David Graham, two ahead of Jose Maria and Lazabel. So the Australians pretty well in command of that match at the moment and Ireland versus England Ronan Rafferty and Barry Lane all square there's Smith one down on uh, Nick uh, one up rather on Nick Faldo and Eamon Darcy two up on Mark James Eamon's playing well isn't he well we'll be back with the golf had a wonderful run from the seventh he had five successive threes at seven eight nine ten and eleven and here is Seve on the long 14th. So he needs quite a run now in order to catch Norman. Ballesteros has had only two birdies in this match. And now Norman. Oh no. He's well, upset something about disturbed that. him he... on the backswing there. Something disturbed him just as he started. And I think he's pushed that out to the right. He has. Greg won't be too happy about that. Well, the Australian's pretty well in command of their match. And here we have a very close match indeed between Ireland and England. Ronan Rafferty and Barry Lane are still all square at three under after 11 holes. Des Smith is just one ahead of Nick Faldo after nine. And Eamon Darcy is one ahead of Mark James after eight. So the Irish actually are up in two of the matches, but uh, all three matches very, very close indeed. Well, D Darcy playing extraordinary well again. He had those three birdies at the first three holes. Uh, he didn't do so well after that. He went 5-5-5 five, five, five after that, but then came back with two more threes. So that's very much in the Darcy style. So we have uh, a fascinating match, I think, in store for us between Ireland and England. But let's concentrate, first of all, on the first of the semi-finals, the one between Spain and Australia. And here is the captain of Spain, Seve Ballesteros, on the 14th. And uh, Ballesteros, who used an iron club quite wisely, he, he's knocked it up considerably shorter than Greg Norman. Norman, unfortunately, disturbed by some unofficial cameraman who took a picture just as he started his downswing, and he's pushed his ball out to the right. The only people who should be on the uh, fairways or anywhere in the uh, golf tournament with cameras are those who are official. So 
of some enthusiastic amateur in the wrong place with a camera that he shouldn't have had with them and Greg Norman is over by the 15th tee. Huge uh, bunker that the second shots have to come past. Hell bunker, the biggest and deepest bunker on the course. They're both safely past it. And Greg's second shot is right across by the 15th tee, but it looks as though he's got a good lie. It just depends how much room he has to work with. You see the high banks that lie between him and the flag. And that massive wall that appears in front of you right now is actually part of the putting green, so you can understand the difficulties if you come in from the wrong side. Ballesteros is a much more straightforward shot. In a dry summer or a normal summer, even the ball would have to be played with some sort of a chip and run shot up that bank. But this week after the torrential rain of Wednesday, it is still damp enough to take pitching wedges and sand irons. This shot is about 65 to 70 yards. Just watch the beautiful wrist action of this man as he starts his backswing, almost straight into wrist cock. He's unhappy about that one. He won't come up the bank with that. You see, you didn't have a miss hit. Pin so close to the front edge. And Ballesteros was going to make a move. It really had to be about now. Five behind. Uh, Norman with quite a lot of green. So long as he doesn't uh, attempt to get straight at the flag, he's got quite a lot of green. If he's going to try and get close, and I think he is, look, he's laying the face right open on his sand iron. And that's a beautiful shot. Just look at that. Talk about using the undulations. That was perfect. Back on the tee in the second match, Jose Rivera with the honour. He's level par, so he's three behind Roger Davis, but he has the honour because he had the most recent birdie. And he's flirted with the Beardies. Roger Davis at three under. So Spain are going to win this match. They've got to turn one of these top two games round and with only four or five holes left. Not a lot of time to do it. Oh, no. No. Some applause, but he was looking a touch anxiously at it. And that's why, and that's gone down into the pit of nethermost despond. Very difficult to get a five from there, so a chance. Now, Ballastillas, who uh, actually trails by three shots, trails the Australian captain by three shots. You can see just how difficult this putt is. Indeed, it's much more difficult than even our camera tells you. He's done a pretty good job of that, hasn't he? A beautiful putt. A beautiful putt. It's uh, a five, and he is angry. He can't really afford to take pars anymore. Not if he's going to pull away this lead. In fact, he knows in his heart that it's quite conceivable Norman will tap this one in and increase the lead by another shot. The Battle of the Giants today, Greg Norman and Ballesteros both rivaling for the, the title of being the best player in the world. Now that's a wonderful thing to claim. 
And I think Norman, who has been playing almost in second gear so far in this uh, tournament, his rounds of 71 and 73, but suddenly when he came up against Ballesteros, he changed gear and off he went. Incredible stuff. Out in 33, and then he started back with another three, four under par. Save he was one under at the tournament as part of everything else. Just a little bit of break from left to right. A one handed address. Good look at the ball. Center shafted putter now. He's got rid of his old blade. Beautifully hold. Well, he had an unfortunate incident with his second shot. It's a third and fourth. Quite brilliant. Five under par. Four shot lead. Behind them, though, Australia in a little bit of trouble. And however well he gets out of this, provided he does get out, he won't be able to reach the green in three. There's this cluster of bunkies, bunkers that are known as the birdies, beardies. And that's the risk. And it's not just the little one at the 17th that caused it off. Those are very steep faces. Now, remember, this is a medal tournament. So each one of these is very expensive because you could lose one, two, three shots here this hole. And he played that one out more sideways, but that's three. And he will be playing four, I suspect, before Rivero plays three, before Rivero plays two. And suddenly a relatively comfortable lead of three shots is evaporating before his eyes. Now Rivero is down on the fifth fairway away to the left as they play the whole of the, the beard is. And although this whole way out of reach 567 yards, there are a couple of little clutches of bunkers just short of the green. And uh, they play very much for position and perhaps almost to leave themselves a full shot for their third. 15th tee and Greg Norman. Five under. And really no bunkers uh, for these fellows to worry about under these conditions. There are several, about 200 yards from the tee, but uh, with no wind against, they sail yeah. over them. A little bit of a saddle down the fairway, and Seve really is in trouble. Four holes to go. He's four behind. And, uh, well, we could see a big change in the Davis match. So all not yet lost, as far as Spain are concerned, particularly with the Lazabelle now leading Graham. But that's a fine shot, but you see, tucked a bit under that bank. Just over 400 yards, this 15th, with a green 60 yards yeah, long. Oh, the 15th green there. This vast green and the flag pretty well at the back and the mist seems to be sort of gathering again. It's getting a little bit gloomy. It's and yet the clubhouse, uh, yes, as we look back from our commentary position back towards the old clubhouse, it's sort of disappearing in the mist. I suppose it's about 450 yards from us. So it might be uh, a near run thing if in fact they manage to finish tonight. We hope they do. There's the scoreboard by the 17th green. Great old road hole. 
And it really is a, an incredible bit of architecture, the, the green and the surround at the 17th. Clive Clark and myself, we had a little wander out this morning and looked at the, the road bunker. And uh, it really is beautifully, beautifully placed bunker. And uh, it's one of those holes where whatever the, the length of it, if you brought the tee forward 100 yards so you could drive within, you know, maybe 80, 90, 100 yards of the green, it would still be a cracking par four. The degree of difficulty would almost be the same. You see today the flag right at the back of the green. So we may see somebody take the left-hand line up to the green towards that sign if they're afraid of the road. The 14th green, and of course a lot of these greens do look very similar. And the Merck and Davis has played his fourth and is short of the green. Rivera very short. He's sort of more or less level with Hell Bunker, which is about some 120 yards from the pin. And I think probably just about might see the top of the pin, the line to the right of our camera tower. So that's Rivero's third. Important he gets this close. Oh, and he's made the same mistake Seve did. And look where it's shot away down there and left himself a very difficult putt. He's got to up that steep slope and then the green slopes down to the hole. And a good drive from Seve at the 15th. He's got a slight uphill lie here, just over 160 yards to go. And the pin well to the back of this green. There must be some uh, 30, 35 yards of uh, green to cross. And uh, the important thing, really, off that lie to get up to the pin. Seve will probably require something like a six iron. Well, the way things are looking in this Australia-Spain clash, it, it will all depend on Rivero, unless Seve can have a magical finish or Norman, Norman's game fall apart, uh, falls apart. And at this moment, Seve is the one that looks disenchanted. I think he's pulled it away to our right as we he looked like a man who let the club head wrap over. Yes, there he is, um, almost 20 yards wide of the target. second shot nice to be four ahead and see your opponent 20 odd yards from the hole hmm, hello has he done the similar sort of yes he has uh, two very for them untidy shots and there's the flag on the that's the third flag over there on the right and the one they're aiming at is away to our left that's the one they're going for Roger Davis, fifth shot. And he's too still got thick end of 115, 120 yards to go. Maybe even more. Oh, what a great shot. Marvellous. Fifth shot it may be, bound to drop one, but it may only be one, not the two that looked certain a moment or two ago. Well, indeed, he could have dropped anything there, two or three strokes, but uh, that could... We'll have to wait and see, but that stroke there from Roger Davis could be the one that uh, gets Australia through into the final. This is Greg Norman he, and Seve. Uh, Greg, totally in charge of this match, and as Harry was saying, he had a great run from the seventh. He had uh, five threes in a row, only two of them were short holes. So that's the famous sort of loop here at St Andrews. You go right out the end of the course and turn round and come home, and there are a couple of drive and pitch holes and uh, two short holes, and... Uh, that's where you have to really make your score. And that's exactly what Greg did. Back on the 14th, and I think Rivero made a mistake there. I mean, it's a very difficult shot from where he was, or for that matter, where Roger Davis was, to get the ball close to the pin, with it, the pin being so near to the front of that shelf. But by leaving it short of the green, the error being short, right? he must have given a little bit of encouragement to Davis. And now, of course, were he to take three putts and Davis to hold this, then he's made no ground at all, because it would be a half in six.
quite a good putt, even though he's still four feet away. <coughs> As you can see, still outside Davis. And I think <coughs> the winning and the losing, as Peter was saying, is right here of this game. He's three adrift at the moment. And Roger Davis, now mm -hmm. if he can get this in, he's bound to pick up one shot. And two, I think, with four holes to play is manageable. <coughs> of course, anything's manageable. Remember, Peter Senior last year, a couple of holes ahead, made a terrible mess of things, went well in control of his match against Howard Clark when England played Australia, and that was the... Uh, he really didn't manage to make... Uh, just a snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Now then, crucial minute and a half or so now. Uh, for this to get close, this putt must go in. Very, very expensive, emotionally as well as practically. So that's a six. And I think it really paid the price of being too defensive. Once his opponent was in trouble, he was ultra safe. And having played some very good golf in the first two days, his one over par is very disappointing. Psychologically, quite a, an error there. We're about to see the great escape. No problem then, he must feel absolutely delighted and a gasp of breath and, well, very lucky, but uh, the mistake was his opponent's. A real, real let off there for Roger Davis. Fifteenth green, Ballesteros and Norman. Both of them remember they were away over on our right as we look from here, and uh, they've both padded up. Uh, Greg Norman got his four, and Sebi's raced one by, and you can see, well, that's very missable. He's four strokes adrift, only three holes left after this. Yes, nicely hold. Four behind, and off they go to the 16th. On the 15th tee, Rivero. Rather dejected Rivero, I'm sure. He's driven nicely down this fairway. 15th hole, 413 yards. Roger Davis. As Bruce said, a very relieved and no doubt very happy Roger Davis. And he's just I think on the fairway, just below that little grassy bank. Sixteenth tee, Greg Norman. Three eighty-two yards. The principal's nose, a cluster of bunkers in the middle of the fairway. And the decision has to be made to go right or left, and in Greg Norman's case, he must be way to the left, no point in 
taking the race now. Seve, who had such a great run, August, September, from the uh, time when he won the Open. And his sort of golfing coat has rather lost its bloom, I feel, just the last week or two. They like it. He's a bit, he questions it. And he too, long and left. Ronan Rafferty at the 14th, having a tremendous battle with Barry Lane. Rafferty and Lane both just had birdie threes at the 13th. Rafferty five under, Lane four under. Rafferty's pretty wide, but appears to be okay. And Barry Lane showing uh, a bit of really good form. He's four under, still one behind, but this England-Scotland encounter could go either way. And I think whoever wins this top match, I think that side will win the battle. I think psychologically it'll be a big thing to see the players coming up behind see that their man has won. And here's a check for you on the Ireland-England match. As Peter was saying, this Rafferty-Barry Lane match is really quite tremendous. Rafferty has uh, birdied the 12th and the 13th, two threes there to go five under. Barry Lane has also birdied the 13th to keep himself within one stroke. And Des Smith and uh, Nick Fowler, what a battle they're having. Nick's just had a birdie at the 12th, birdie three there. So they're all square again. And Damon Darcy and Mark, Mark James, just one in it there. Damon Darcy, one stroke ahead. But uh, again, that's they were all square up until the 10th when Mark James took a five at the par four 10th. There's no doubt at all that the mist or the sea fret, or the ha, whatever you call it, is beginning to close in a little bit. And uh, this is the 18th, looking back towards the, the clubhouse, the old bridge in the foreground, and you can just see the pillars of the clubhouse. Uh, but a short time ago, it was all as clear as could be, and now the, the murk is beginning to descend again. And at the 15th, Rivero, his second shot, a six iron shot for the Spaniard and the beauty what a beauty it is too within 10 or 12 feet and even that's not making him happy not after the last hole he may well have finished Spain's chances just a few moments ago As a result of Greg Norman's tee shot, he uh, hit a long iron there, hit it fairly well left, and uh, he's left himself quite a long second on this hole, almost 170 yards, but uh, a good lie there, good uh, flat level stance. His uh, opponent, though, way down the course, for high booming drive, turned it over, and Sebi's only got 100 yards to go. Very easy for Greg Norman at the moment. Four shots clear. Three holes get to let to go. Yeah, at the 15th, Roger Davis playing in his match against Rivero. His second shot. Just going to the right, I think. Yes, it does. It mustn't get too far, or it can sweep away down. A rather severe slope. I think it's held safely. A rear view of Sevi. Left hand side. And big greens, but actually where the pin itself is is quite a sort of small shelf, but from this distance should present no problems. His only chance, I suspect, now is for Greg Norman to make a complete nonsense of the 17th, which he's done in the past. Yeah. To help his own cause, three here. Imperative. In 
15th green and Roger Davis and Rivero and there are always turning points in matches and the 14th might be well remembered by the Australians should they win this cup again. Roger Davis yesterday against Llewellyn of Wales at the 14th, his tee shot was pushed and it landed on top of that stone dike and instead of kicking out of bounds it kicked into the fairway and today on the very same hole when all Luke lost when he was in that bunker he ended up with a miracle iron shot and he got out with a six and a half and that really may be and there's a, a couple of uh, fans have come all the way from Australia I hope they're not going to pull a brick off the dike and take it home as a souvenir wonderful the way this golf course has the all the play in the center of the great arena and uh, the fairways are shared and you play up the outsides This is David Graham of Australia. David Graham in his match against uh, Olazabal. And Olazabal is uh, four under and Graham one over. Didn't look as if it was going to be that way when they set out. Davis, David Graham going to two under after three holes. But at the fifth, he had a seven and a five at the sixth and everything turned around. And he looks as though he might have lost interest a little bit in this game and we'll go back to the 15th to Roger Davis who certainly is interested mm, good part Davis two under par and the 16th Greg Norman up for a three Stays at five under and a couple of fours. Give him a round of 67. Yeah. Far and away his best play of the week, having had 71 and 73 in the two previous rounds. Now. To exert any pressure, he must knock this in. Uh, the way his game is running at the moment one has to feel it's unlikely yeah. surprises us so good three takes him to two under he doesn't look as though he's playing real well. it's still two under par but three strokes adrift Fourteenth hole now, Ronan Rafferty playing uh, top four. Ireland, this is his third shot at the par five. He's a stroke ahead of England's Barry Lane. Oh, just tiptoed up onto the against. Good shot, very good shot from Ronan. Seventeenth tee and Ballesteros after that good putt. Well, if you can see it, tell me where it's gone because uh, we are now looking back from the green to try and pick up the ball as it lands and I think that he's hit a very long shot he's actually run out of fairway and he's in the semi rough on the left uh, you see that uh, wooden green wooden building to the left with the writing on it there are several letters on it all O's and you must pick whichever one you wish to fire over 
Greg Norman with the driver. Center of the fairway. Fourteenth green, Lane and Rafferty. Rafferty's played three and looks to be about oh four or five steps away from the hole. And this really it's been a ding dong game. Rafferty's had all fours and threes. He's five under. And Barry Lane's had a couple of fives two and a few threes and there's a view look you can see the sun is that the sun the old current bun burning away up there but it's uh, the mist is winning at the moment that's looking from our camera by the clubhouse at the 18th down the fairway and this is the 16th it really rolling in the, these cameras of ours usually cut through the gloom and so it's much darker in fact uh, less visibility and it even looks on there so the officials may be getting a little bit concerned about whether or not play will finish. Now here's Rafferty, this for a birdie. Looks good. Oh, very good. Pete Coleman there, Langer's caddy, has picked up his bag and seems to be inspiring the young man. Six under, that, that's mighty good playing. Back on the tee in the second England Ireland game. Faldo versus Smith, all square at three under par. And visibility a lot better out there towards Lucas. Now, does Smith? really is between the devil and the deep blue sea this tee shot beard is on the left out of bounds over the wall on the right the natural fader of the ball there Smith with that willowy swing He's tripled down the bank, and that's Faldo's ball away to the left. Middle of the fifth fairway. Now it's the 17th, and it does appear as if it's clearing a little bit again. The uh, sun is out above the commentary box, and Savi can actually see the green. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Savi does here. Um, obviously, he has to attack. He's got a fairly decent lie over there in the semi rough just over 200 yards to go, but the... Uh, road hole bunker there uh, right in his line to the pin I personally doubt that he can uh, get a shot straight over that bunker and then stop it particularly uh, from that uh, line in the semi rough he, he can certainly get up though he'll probably need something like a six iron from there I think the ball fly a bit but uh, we may see him attempt to play for the center of the green here I think it's about the best he can do well thank you Clive I think it is a six iron he's aiming a bit to the right as though to try and hook the ball in he sent it out to the right. Save the peers and we hear applause. <laughs> I wish I could tell you where it is, but I have no idea. Just so long as the audience know what they're applauding, it must be good. Now, Rafferty's hold his putt at the 14th for a birdie. Can Barry Lane follow him in? He can. So, two excellent birdie fours at the, the long 14th. Now, Greg Norman, with a much easier line coming in. Well, he can go directly at the flag. Not that he has to. He's got a three-shot lead. Mustn't end up in the bunker. 
Oh, well, there's no applause. There's a few oohs and ahs. We'd better hang about a while, I think. Well, I can see the flag now. There's it on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen is the flag. The bunker just over the top of it, the famous bunker. <laughs> 